the biggest story in college football. It was who will fill in the spot that was left when $76.8 million was paid to fire Jimbo Fisher and move on. Ladies and gentlemen, it's this man, head coach of the Texas A&M Aggie football team, Mike Elko. Yeah! Thanks, Pat. Appreciate you. Still got still got the hype man going in my corner. I appreciate that from you always. Well, to be clear, when I started hyping you up there, I didn't know if you were on the Zoom call or if we were connected or not. So as I was, no, too- I was on. You're on. I was on. Like I was in the corner getting ready to come out into the ring. Um, you had me going. Okay. Well, first of all, oh, what I didn't say in there, and I think we would all like to congratulations, man. Here you go, coach. Congratulations, Congrats, coach. Yeah. Uh, appreciate you. Now, Real, uh, really exciting time for me. Exciting time for my family. Obviously, this is this is a dream opportunity that we've been hoping for for a long time. And so, um, you know, so excited to be here and be part of this thing. Okay, so you were there a few years ago, obviously, as defense coordinator. You leave to go be the head coach at Duke. What you do at Duke is phenomenal from a football standpoint. Game day was down there. We were down there. Your players loved you. Your team loved you. Now, in the world that we're in right now, getting to a place like Texas A&M, we all just saw the $76.8 million buyout. It's like you're going to have an opportunity now to kind of, you know, recruit and do things that maybe you weren't able to do at Duke, no offense to Duke, but like now you're getting an opportunity to really go, right? Is that what kind of drew you to Texas A&M? And how do you feel now about what the next steps are to kind of get the team back on track? Yeah, for sure. I think obviously this is a place that is resourced and supported at a level that you can win it all, right? And, and as a coach, that's what you want. You want to you want to be supported by a fan base and, and resourced in a way that you can go out there and you can win the whole, the whole thing. And we certainly can do that. And then, um, you know, what's next? What's next is everything. You know, we got to put a staff together. We got to start building relationships with the current class that's committed. We got to build relationships with the guys in this building. Um, and we got to go to work. And, and we've got to become what this program is capable of becoming. You know, it's, it's certainly uh, been well documented how much this place has to offer. Uh, we've got to make all of that a reality. Hell yeah. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, where are you at in the, the process of building your staff? That's something that not as many casual fans, I think, talk about. you got to come in and, and find the right staff and who you want to hire, who do you want there. How difficult is that and how long do you think that'll take? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously it's it's critical, right? The, the people that back me and the people that support me and you know the pyramid that we form from the top down throughout this organization is ultimately what leads to our successes and our failures. And so uh, we're going to do it as fast as as we can, but we're also going to make sure we do it the right way and that we get guys in here that uh, can coach football, can relate to kids, can recruit, uh, and can do all the things that you need to do uh, to build the program we want to build. Are you sitting in your office right now? Where are you? I am sitting right in my office. I like how we got nothing on it yet. Nothing. Hell yeah. Not no, a, nothing. Not a, nothing. Have, decorations will come next year. Oh, I respect. We got to we got to win a bunch of games. We got to get a bunch of recruits. We got to get some people in this building. Uh, there's an awful lot of things that are going to happen before we start decorating stuff. Okay, so I assume that there's going to be a lot of places that wanted your services for how good of a football coach you are, and for everything we learned about you this year. Now we should have known about you before. We apologize, but learning about you, you seem to do everything right. Texas A&M, like obviously, they have all the resources to everything. Is it a place you think that can go, or is it a place that you're going to have to win right now? Like, what are your expectations from the people that you're talking to at Texas A&M, and what have others maybe told you about potentially taking this job versus maybe another place that you could have went to? Yeah, no, I think this one was a little bit unique for me because I know this place hands down, right? And I spent four years here, and uh, I've said this to a bunch of recruits. I know every reason why we should win a national championship here, and I, I kind of know some of the reasons why we haven't. And and I'm the guy that can come in here, in my, my opinion, and bridge this gap the way we need to. And um, the reason why I'm here is, you know, one, because of how special this place was to me and my family for the four years that I was here last time. And the two, because I think we can do it all. We can win it all and we can do it the right way. And, and those two things for anybody who knows me or anybody who's ever talked to me, um, that's all I've ever wanted. I wanted a place where I could win it all the right way. And, and that's what I think we can do here at Texas a &M. That's phenomenal. Their fan base is always there. Always there. Every always. video I've seen, they, they are always, always. there. Any game, you. anytime, any opponent, whenever, wherever, we're going to be 103,000 strong in Kyle Field. Coach, these videos have been hitting the internet, though, the night before games. They're called, like, yell practice or something. Something like that, yeah. You need to... Yeah. You need to 
I mean, I assume it's a massive tradition, but those need not get let out publicly. Can't have it. You know, those need to, no. you need to stay in house. Those need to stay in house, coach. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, here, here's the thing you got to realize, though, Pat, and, and I tell this to people all the time. I've told them this about Texas AM, right? People outside of it maybe don't understand it, but the spirit of this place is unique. And you tell me where else you can get 50,000 fans in a stadium 24 hours before kickoff. Okay. All right. No. Hey, listen, maybe keep the Yelp price. That's true. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just saying. Hey, uh, Darius, I'm just saying. There's not a lot of programs that can put that many people in a stadium that far before kickoff. People loyal down there. Yeah. Darius has a question send, for you. Send a couple of them out to, out to Houston to help, help my guys out. Yeah. But, uh, something uh, a lot of people don't talk about, and obviously you have experience with, with it. Congratulations once again. But how tough is it? to kind of move on and I guess up, you know, in this business is coaching, especially recruiting kids and then moving on. How challenging is that for a coach? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think it's the worst part of, of what happens, you know, and, and obviously listen, I made the decision to come here and um, to some degree words become hollow at that point, but um, you make a lot of special connections. Uh, I'm very thankful to president price and athletic director, Nina King. You know, they were the ones who believed in me and gave me that opportunity. There were an awful lot of people around that program that supported me. And, you know, there's a lot of players in that locker room that believed in me and, all of that comes together and creates this opportunity for me. And, um, you know, in some de some degree, you turn your back on all of that. And you know, that's never easy. Um, and that's not something that that I take lightly at all. And um, the best I can do is just say that I'll, I'll be there to support them and um, whatever they ever need from me, I'll be there for them. Okay, so let's talk about that. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, just curious. So like, when you come into this situation, how do you balance the use of the transfer portal and recruiting? Because obviously you want to recruit your own guys and and you need to do yeah. that because the portal is in a sense almost kind of just slapping a band-aid on things um for you know a quick turnaround but when you understand the expectations you know like at texas a&m it's not one of those things where it's hey we have a bunch of time to get our own guys in here and we can kind of take the lumps and and maybe not do that great until those guys develop like how do you kind of manage that fine line between, hey, we want to go out and we want to recruit our guys, but we also need to kind of look in the portal and try to improve very quickly for next year. Yeah, I think the first part of that is is culture wins and, and talented culture wins championships. And so that has to be at the premium. And so everyone that we bring into this program has to want to be part of Texas A&M football. Uh, and so a large chunk of that is always going to be high school recruits. Um, we play in the greatest football state in the country. Oh, uh, oh, the high school oh. football in Texas is where everything will start for us, uh, making sure we build relationships with everybody in this state and, and clean this state out for every kid that we think fits <laughs> us the right way. Um, but then you got to expand, right? And, and expansion nowadays is going national and recruiting and, and it's the portal. And the portal's always got a piece of how you recruit and how you supplement your roster. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, I would imagine your time that you've already spent there on campus, you already have great relationships with a lot of the big time high school coaches in Texas. How big of a part is that? Like, how easy did it make it to come back there knowing you already have these relationships in place? And like you said, you want to clean Texas out of all the talent that would fit your program. Yeah, I, I think it's it's just knowing that people are going to support you and believe in you, right? Anytime you go to a place where you've established relationships, you've done things the right way. Oh, it's gone. They're throttling. Uh, when you can go back into that environment, you know those people are going to support you every way they can. And, um, you know, that in and of itself creates a comfort level that makes this feel like it could happen really fast for us. What was the interview process like? You know, how, did you have to lay out like your recruiting pitch to people you know in Texas? Was it they wanted you, they were pitching you bad to come back? What was the whole kind of give and take to get you to this point? Um, you know, those things are always extensive. It, it starts with a little bit of an initial conversation. And then, um, you know, a lot of times it's the body of work. And, and that's all I've ever sold. You know, I sold the body of work of what I did here at Texas A&M for four years and what we did on defense incrementally getting better every single year that I was here. And then what I did at Duke as a head football coach. And um, I've always kind of let my body of work speak for who I am. I've not been a guy who uh, goes out publicly and makes a lot of loud, outrageous statements. 
Um, it's just not who I am. It's probably why you never heard of me prior to you coming down to campus and checking in on us. That's but, awesome. um, you know, if you check my background and you check who I've been and you check what I've done over the years, uh, that'll measure up against anybody in the country. Uh, a lot of the guys that you had over at Duke on the coaching staff going to make the trip with you, or do you have to recruit those guys? I assume because whenever you have success, everybody's looking to grab a piece of that. Yeah, no doubt. And, and listen, you try to be as loyal as you can to the people who helped get you here. Um, there's there's uh, quite a few guys that will fit, um, you know, and then there's other guys. You know, the hard part about when you do this, people don't realize is, you know, there's there's a whole bunch of people you have relationships with in coaching uh, and either cross paths with them and respect them or uh, have worked with them or spent time with them. And uh, you got this huge pot of guys. And what I have to do is I just got to put together the right puzzle for Texas A&M at this time. And uh, again, we're going to take our time and do that the right way. How happy are you to be back in the SEC, get a chance to chat with Feinbaum today? Huh? That's a dream come true. Huh? We're back in the SEC. I'll tell you what, you, you know you've made it when you get a request to double team McAfee and Feinbaum in the same day. Whoa, um, whoa. That's when you know that's when you know and you're where calm, you want to be as a coach. Hey, listen, <laughs> that's a tag team yep. that I think the world <laughs> doesn't need a lot of, but you are gonna crush it, obviously, on that show as you did this one. We can't wait to see what you do down there, man. You're a good ball coach and a good dude. We're proud of you. Yeah, I appreciate you, Pat. I appreciate everything you guys have done for me this year and uh, obviously look forward to continuing this and uh, just appreciate your show, everything you're doing, everything you guys are about. Well, it's stupid. You know that. So I, I appreciate uh, the fact that a super genius like yourself can appreciate it. Now, as you're piecing together that contract, you're like, if they want to fire me, it's fine. But I know it goes down here. We need $79 million yeah. yep. <laughs> to buy out of this thing. How, how, much of that, how much of that business that has taken place in the coaching, college coaching business is obviously an insane one. And there's a fine gentleman who is a Southern, Southern boy mm. who's really at the pinnacle of all of it, Mr. Jimmy Sexton. How much do you pay attention to all that? And how quick did that deal get done for you to get to Texas a and once you guys agreed that you were the right for each other? Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm going to be the unicorn in this business and how this stuff goes. Um, I started getting paid way more than I needed to to coach football a long time ago. And so I got people that handle that. Um, I want a job. I want an opportunity. I want to win football games. I want to win championships. Um, the rest of that stuff, I let other people handle. And, um, you know, listen, we get what we get, and it's crazy. And uh, from how I grew up, where I started in this business, uh, I was at the United States Merchant Marine Academy calling plays. And so uh, I've way exceeded expectations from where this thing started for me. Hell yeah. Well, congrats. You've earned it all along the way. Ladies and gentlemen, new coach at Texas A&M, Mike Elko. Thank yeah. you, Pop. Appreciate you guys. Hey, thank you, man. Make sure they pay you and if, if they fire you, though. Not when, if. Hopefully not. Yeah, make sure. I may, I may hire you. You're going to be half agent, half hype man. Hey, you got it, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Hey, I'm, I'm okay with that job. Pretty good at both of them. You're the man. You deserve it all. Coach Elko, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, coach. Yeah.